as I go through this, I will remind you, but keep in mind at any point, if you need to pause the video to finish getting your notes, you are more than welcome to do so. All right, so here we go. Let's jump right in. So we will begin with a definition and equation. So cellular respiration is a whole bunch of reactions that take place in the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse, okay? And the purpose is to convert biochemical energy from nutrients or food into ATP, okay? And then release, and then release the waste products. So like I said, this takes place in the mitochondria. And just like we studied in our last unit, mitochondria is the powerhouse, okay? Because it creates energy. And ATP is that energy molecule that we're creating. Okay, and here is the reaction for cellular respiration. So if you take a look at it, you can see we take in sugar or glucose, okay, and we breathe in oxygen. When those two combine, we release carbon dioxide and water vapor, and we make ATP, which is our energy molecule. So again, we're going to recap these by stating the reactants and the products. So what we started with, right, that sugar and that oxygen are our reactants. What we ended with become our products then. So carbon dioxide, water, and ATP will be our products. Okay, so if you need to pause this video before you move on, you're more than welcome to do so. All right, there's nothing to write for this. Just kind of take a look at it. If you want to jot down anything, you are more than welcome to find some space in your foldable where you can jot this down. Otherwise, you can just take a look at it and listen, okay? So just to kind of recap all of cellular respiration before we look at the different steps, the first step is always glycolysis, okay? No matter what, it's always glycolysis. And this actually takes place in the cytoplasm, so outside of the mitochondria, okay? And two ATP or two energy molecules are made here. Then it will take one of two routes, okay? It will either go to step 2A where there's oxygen present or step 2B where oxygen is not present. So if you take a look down here, remember aerobic respiration is when oxygen is present. So think when you're doing aerobic exercises, you need oxygen, right? You need a lot more oxygen. You'll do a lot more heavy breathing to get oxygen, okay? Anaerobic respiration is when oxygen is not present, okay? Remember that kind of that prefix a or an often means not. So anaerobic is oxygen is not present or there is no oxygen, okay? So let's take a look at the two routes, okay? So if we look at the first route, if oxygen is present, after glycolysis, you will have the Krebs cycle. So you will make two additional ATP. After the Krebs cycle, you will move on to the electron transport chain where you will make an additional 32 ATP. Okay, so that will give you a total of about 36 ATP. Now, if oxygen was not present, after glycolysis, you would move on to fermentation. Okay, and there are two types of fermentation. There is alcohol fermentation, okay, and then there is lactic acid fermentation. Okay, and we'll go into details for all of these steps later on in a few slides, all right? So here you're writing under glycolysis. So the word glycolysis can actually be divided into two. The word glyco, the first half, means sugar, and the word lysis means breaking. So literally, it means that you're breaking sugar. So that sugar, that glucose that's being taken in is being broken down to release the energy from within, okay? Glycolysis does not require oxygen, okay? It's later on where you will need oxygen. Again, glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm. So you are not in the mitochondria when glycolysis is happening. So even without the mitochondria, some energy can still be made. Not a lot, but some can still be made. So in glycolysis, glucose is the reactant. So glucose is your sugar molecule. At the end of glycolysis, okay, you're making two pyruvate molecules, okay? two ATP or energy molecules, and two NADH. The biggest one I want you to remember is the two ATP molecules, okay? In glycolysis, the net yield or the total amount of ATP extra produced are two, okay? And you do need to remember that, okay? And then after glycolysis, there are some other steps before the Krebs cycle begins, but you don't need to worry about those, okay? If you need to pause the video right now, feel free to do so so you can finish copying before moving on. 
Okay, now I'm going to start with aerobic respiration. So if oxygen was present, we would move on to the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle takes place in the mitochondria, specifically in the matrix. Okay, you start off with these two acetyl CoA's. Okay, again, don't worry too much about that. The one I do want you to worry about is the products. So you're making two more ATP in Krebs cycle. So in glycolysis, we made two, and now in Krebs cycle, we're making two more. We're also making some NADHs and FADH2s, okay? And those are your electron carriers. They will be needed when you get to the electron transport chain, okay? In Krebs cycle, you also release carbon dioxide, okay? That's important to note. After the Krebs cycle, you move on to the electron transport chain. This, again, also takes place in the mitochondria. It just takes place in the inner membrane. Okay, in here, you have these reactants. So whatever was made from the Krebs cycle, whatever was made from glycolysis, any extras, they come here. So you get two NADHs from glycolysis and six from Krebs cycle, and the two FADH square twos from the Krebs cycle, and then oxygen is taken in here, okay? So now this is where oxygen is needed, okay? You need to know that you make 32 ATP at the end of this, so that's the product, and you release some water, okay? The energy from the electrons, like I talked about how NADH and FADH2 are electron carriers, so the energy from these electrons is actually used to make ATP. And because electrons are such high energy molecules, that is why you're able to make so many ATP. Just remember, both are aerobic respirations. That means oxygen is required for both. All right? If you need to pause the video, feel free to do so now before moving on. All right? Now, say we finish glycolysis and there is no oxygen present. Then the cell will go through fermentation, okay? There are two types of fermentation. The first is alcohol fermentation. Yeast, plants, and some bacteria are known to do this, okay? You start off with two pyruvates, so right after glycolysis, and the end products are ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide, okay? And this is how beer and wine are produced, and this is also how bread is produced, okay? So think about this, if you've ever made bread at home, when bread is made, you actually create the dough, knead the dough, and then you let it sit and you let it rise. When that bread is rising, that is actually yeast activating inside and producing ethyl alcohol, which makes the bread rise, okay? And then when the bread is baked, that alcohol is actually burned off, okay? Lactic acid fermentation is done by animals and bacteria, okay? That means you do it as well, okay? You also start off with two pyruvate, your products this time are now lactic acid, okay? And also two ATPs are produced, okay? Lactic acid is important to know, okay? Lactic acid is actually in the yogurt that you eat. So bacteria in your yogurt will actually do lactic acid fermentation and create lactic acid, which gives yogurt that, that distinct taste, okay? And lactic acid is what causes muscle soreness. So when you're working out, um, a lot and your muscles aren't getting that oxygen they need because of your workout, they will produce lactic acid and that's why you feel that soreness. Okay? And once again, these are both anaerobic respirations. That means oxygen is not present. If you need to pause the video, feel free to do so now before moving on. Okay, so here we go. ATP, ADP cycle. This is very, very, very important. Okay, so please make sure you pay attention and make sure you get all of these notes down, okay? You should already have a figure or picture of ATP on your paper, in your foldable. So go ahead and get it labeled, okay? Label these three parts. So the center, that pentagon, is your ribose sugar, okay? You've seen this before when we looked at the nucleotide, and you'll see this again when we go deeper into DNA, okay? This five carbon sugar is ribose, okay? Adenine is the base, and then there are three phosphates, okay? ATP actually stands for adenosine triphosphate. So the adenosine represents the adenine and the ribose, and the triphosphate means there are three phosphate groups attached. That tri means three, okay? 
okay? Now, in order to get the energy out of ATP, you need to remove a phosphate. When you break this bond between the two phosphates, that's how you get the energy out of ATP, okay? When you remove that phosphate, that ATP with three phosphate groups now has only two phosphate groups and is called ADP or adenosine diphosphate, okay? So I want you to find some space where you can sketch this, okay? And sketch out ADP, okay? It's the same structure, you just have one less phosphate. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the same cycle that's on your page. As you can see, here's ATP. Think of ATP as a charged battery full of energy, okay? When that energy is used, okay, in order to do that, you need to remove a phosphate, okay? And here's that phosphate being removed, and you have ADP. So when you lose energy, that's when that phosphate is broken off to get that energy, okay? So think of ADP as like a dead battery or kind of slightly discharged battery that needs to be recharged and created into ATP again, okay? Again, make sure you have this sentence on your paper. When you remove a phosphate from ATP, you release or get energy, okay? If you need to pause the video, feel free to do so now before moving on to the last little bit. Find this on the back of your foldable or on the back page of your foldable, okay? This summarizes all of cellular respiration, both aerobic and anaerobic, okay? So here we go. You start off with glucose. Glucose is your sugar molecule, okay? And glucose goes through glycolysis. All of this happens in the cytoplasm. So in the cytoplasm, glycolysis takes place and you create two ATP, okay? Now, at the end of glycolysis, you make a molecule called pyruvate, okay? After this, the cell will go in one of two directions. If there is no oxygen, it'll go into anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is also known as fermentation, where usually two ATP molecules are made, okay? And there's alcohol fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. All of this takes place in the cytoplasm. As you can see in the picture, it takes place on that blue background, which is the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, if after glycolysis, oxygen is present, pyruvate goes through aerobic respiration, okay? And this takes place in the mitochondria. Remember, mitochondria is our powerhouse. So this is where energy is made, okay? So here, in aerobic respiration, that pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA, and then it's transferred to the Krebs cycle, okay? At the end of the Krebs cycle, two ATP molecules are released, okay? And then the molecules continue to electron transport chain where you make another 32 ATP using the high energy electrons, okay? And when you add it up with aerobic respiration, you get two plus two plus 32 for a total of 36 ATP molecules. And that is everything for cellular respiration.